Hi, I'm Mark Wheat from The Current, and I'm back in Reykjavik as part of our trip for the Iceland Airwaves Festival this year. We've just come back from Akureyri, where we saw one of our favorite new bands, Mammut. We'll talk about them later, but I'm uh, thrilled, humbled, and honored to be sitting next to uh, a man who I have long admired from a distance. He was a member of one of my favorite all-time bands from the early 80s, Cocteau Twins and went on after the dissolution of them to form one of my favorite labels and one of the best respected inde independent labels in, uh, in the nation and the world, Bella Union Records. And now is back as both a record label representative and a performer, because he's got a brand new project called Lost Horizons, which uh, is playing here tonight as well. So Simon, there's so much to talk to, but we'll keep it short because the sun's going to go down and the swans are getting crazy. Yep. But thank you so much You're for welcome. taking time to do this. No I want to tell you right at the start, when I first came over to America in 81, 82, I, I brought a stack of 12 inches, most of which were Cocteau Twins. That's how much that band meant to me. So day, thank you for that. The day of the 12 inch, for sure. It was yeah, the day of the 12 yeah. inch, yes. And we could start there by saying, I always remember people being a little confused at the time because Elizabeth Fraser, the vocalist with the band, didn't use words per se, sometimes made up her own sounds and language. And it kind of connects us to where we are now because that happened with Sigurros too. They made up their own language. And I wondered if you thought back then that there was any connection or since you've made the connection with some of the music that's coming out of Iceland with the music that you were making back in the early 80s? No, not really. No? I mean, I, don't, I do see the connection. I do see why people see the connection, but I don't see it. Because right. I don't ever think Liz just made up a language. To me, she didn't. She used actually quite normal English words a lot of the time just in a very unusual way. Her phrasing was unique. So, you know, a sentence that to you, to you or I from someone else's lips might sound, you know, mundane. From hers, it would sound otherworldly. Yeah. <laughs> and she would definitely use other languages. Um, you know, she was fascinated by sound yeah. and, and language and words and books and the way words sort of mingled with each other. Um, so I wouldn't say, I mean, perhaps that is inventing your own thing, but I wouldn't say it was inventing a language per se, because, I, I, you know, she definitely um, stuck to things that already existed. Right. Maybe there are a couple of tracks where she, you know, she sort of went off into her own little world with it. But, but from, you know, from what I know about it, uh, from my first hand experiences, it, it mostly was real language, just done yeah. in a particularly unique way. But to, to, answer, to answer your question, there are connections between Cigarros and, and the Cocteaus, not just the vocals. I no, think that's what sonically, I was there, sonically are, um, totally, yeah. there are uh, connections there for sure. But I suppose you could say that about a lot of bands, you know, My Bloody Valentine or, or Explosions in the Sky, or, you know, you could pick anything that sounded a little celestial or a little ethereal yeah. uh, and, and make, make your own assumptions either way. It does, you know, it's not something I ever dwell on, but uh, I, I appreciate that it is. It, Fairly interesting. Well, you've been coming to Iceland, you told me now, for 10 years. Do you feel, yes. or more, do you feel a kind of m musical companionship with the people here who are making music and are working in the music business? Yes, I do. I do. I, I mean, I love, the, I love the nature and the culture here. Um, I've become very close with a lot of people here. One of, our, one of my artists, apart from Mahmoud, as you, you mentioned earlier, yeah. who I work with, uh, one of my American artists lives here, has lived here for several years, John Grant. Yeah. And he's been with the label, well, ever since the beginning, really. Right. Actually, he signed to the label in 98. Yeah. Um, he didn't att attain any real success until around 2010. So where he is currently now, which is a pretty huge artist uh, around the world, maybe not so much in America yet, but yeah. everywhere else he's pretty big. And yes. he, he, he lives over there. Um, he's got a house over there. So he, he's um, a, a connection with the place. Yeah. He made his second album, Pale Green Goes Here, with musicians 
from Gus Gus, who was a band from the 4AD 80 period. That's right. So that's another connection with the past. You know, it's like I can't really escape it. It's like well, wherever no. I go, there's Why would you want there. to? 4AD, yeah, you just mentioned just another of my favorite labels, and, and it's all interwoven as well, especially, yes. I think, uh, in terms of 4AD and the Cocteau's was all about art too and the yeah, and the visual part of making music and that seems to yeah, be Yeah, it's very influential on, on, on me as well at yeah, that period. Yeah. And now I'm working with somebody from another 4AD band from that period. That's right. So um, Richie, it's Richie Thomas, Thomas is so, in your band. Yeah. yeah. So. so you know, you can't you can't escape this stuff. It's out there, you know, all the people I know I suppose it's a sort of 6 degrees of separation kind of thing, you know. Yeah, totally. Um, Talk about Bella Union a little bit from the business point of view. Um, independent label, as I said, award-winning independent label. You've worked with some of the artists we've played. Our audience might know Fleet Foxes. You've worked with Release Flaming Lips, Ezra Furman. As a label uh, executive, if I can call you that, how important is the seeming expansion of music festivals like Iceland Airwaves? Do you think it's a good thing for the record industry? Oh, 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 it's good and bad, you know, there's, there's sometimes, you know, you go to a festival that you've heard is good and the experience isn't always so. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that's, you know, that's the world. You know, yeah. you hear about a restaurant that, you, that's, that everyone says is great and you go there and you hate it. Right. It's going to be a personal experience thing. Yeah. I tend to not go to big festivals. I much prefer, because I don't like large numbers of people. It's, it's not that I don't want to see cool bands, right. but I've been to Coachella and I've been to uh, 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 Glastonbury, yeah. and I am I like the bands sometimes, but I don't enjoy like navigating the experience of, of hundreds of thousands of people. So I like, right. I like the festivals like this where you can wander about, not bump into someone like every five seconds, yeah, exactly. and where there's, there isn't somebody throwing up on your lap, you know, or... <laughs> You know, it's what? just more civilized. I like yeah. boutique festivals, I suppose, yeah. and, and the, the, the better bands tend to play those ones. I don't really want to go see bands. I don't want to go see bands that everyone else goes see because right. that's not my not where I'm going. Right. Well, um, do you have? We've been trying to answer this question. Do you have any idea how or why Iceland has created this festival, which is now one of the biggest in the planet, really, in terms of? bringing bands to and being important for Icelandic bands and how they've developed it over the last 18 years. Do you think they've done it well? Are there key things that are either from the culture or the way they support it that have made it succeed? Yeah, I think it's a mixture of a lot of things. I've always loved coming here for the festival. Until I actually got to know the place a bit better, I couldn't have made a judgment about the country and the culture. Initially, it was just coming to the festival. Yeah. Uh, obviously, geographically, it's quite unique. Just as yeah. you arrive on the plane and you're traveling from the airport over to, to Reykjavik, which is like a 40-minute drive, you know, it, it, if you haven't been here before and you've lived a fairly sort of closeted life, right. it, it is like going to Mars, Mars it's like exactly. being on the, on the moon or something, it's <laughs> yeah. really crazy. Yeah. Um, and I've been very lucky to have Mammut and, and some of my friends here take me out around the countryside yeah. and see a lot more of Iceland than just this, because, you know, fundamentally this is a functioning city, city yeah. with all the same things and all the trappings of uh, the good and the bad yeah. of, of an urban city. Yeah. But uh, the culture of Iceland and the people of Iceland are what makes it special. Uh, if you ask any band that's been here in the last 10, 20 years visiting, um, performing at this festival, they'll all tell you that the, the, um, the hospitality yes. of the Icelandic people, the organization of the festival, because these things are really important to bands. Yes. Because most experiences, <laughs> like there's your dressing room, which right. is just like a, a, a towel. Yeah. You know, yeah, right. uh, and it's not, you know, there's, there's, there's not really much facility for people. Right. When you come here, they really look after you. They give you food vouchers. They yeah. give you beer tickets. And it's easy to navigate. It's a beautiful yeah. experience. The staging is great. The PAs are wonderful. The sound crews are wonderful. The lighting people, you know, yeah. that is that, not generally the experience when right. you go to most festivals. You're in, you're out, there's no sound yeah. check. You don't yeah. get to use your own gear. Yeah. And most people, you come off stage yeah. and we're like, wow, why, why, why did, did I do, do that? that? <laughs> you know? Whereas here, there really feels like, oh, I'm really, I'm really glad we came. Yes, you know? and totally. Obviously, there's a bit of that. There's yeah. a bit of the beautiful countryside we have here. Yep. The air is fun. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, the air is absolutely it's gorgeous. gorgeous. <laughs> um, and, you know, you right. can't really fault it as an experience. That's exactly the experience we've had. 
But I have to go around now to you as a successful radio executive. Why did you decide that you wanted to come back and be a performing artist with the new project Lost Horizons? Well, uh, 20 years I've been doing this, uh, running a record label, and um, in the preparation of celebrations of the anniversary this year, I was looking back at what we'd done, yeah. you know, bands we'd worked with, and, and I should have been feeling proud. I, I felt proud of, of, of events, but I definitely was like, what's missing? There's something I don't feel good about. And I realized that it was the making the music part, which of course oh, was wow. such a huge part of my life for, yeah. for the first half of it. And uh, for the last 20 years, I haven't really done that. Not, not like I did. Yeah, no, totally. um, And I wanted to be uh, making music again, but I didn't care whether it was a record release. I didn't care whether we ever put anything out. I just wanted to play music, right? Music. Live. I mean, that's the that's the thing. You no, that about. wasn't what I, what right. I was initially intending to do. <laughs> this is uh, to sort of come come around like really quick. I was not expecting when I made this record, which is like uh, me and Richie basically, and, yeah. uh, and and some friends doing some vocals. I didn't really ever expect to do it. No, but when, when people just kept asking me, and I was like, well, I guess we could okay. give it a go. <laughs> so we've given it a go, and well, you'll see the you'll see the results in about three hours. <laughs> cool. Well, I hope it's our you're second in... show ever. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And no more plans for any more? Or yeah, are you, we are yeah, doing a lot more. Do yeah, 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 we're heading off to... Uh, are you heading... coming to America? Are you going to come and play the Twin I Cities? I would love to. Um, we haven't awesome. had an offer yet, and we don't have a, a, a booking agent there yet, but um, we'll, see what, uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I'd love to come <laughs> and play there. Obviously, uh, adore it. adore the country, yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking time no worries, out of man. your really busy nice schedule you. and nice uh, good luck with the new project. Congratulations on Bella Uni and the thank anniversary. You. It's uh, phenomenal and thank uh, you very much. many, many happy returns back to Iceland. We'll probably see you every year from now on. Oh, Let's well, make thanks. it a regular. Thank you so much. Simon Raymond from Lost Horizons and Bella Union Records here in Reykjavik, Iceland for Iceland Airwaves on The Current. Thanks. <laughs>